I've had a, a chance to look at your book, Your Retirement Dream or Disaster. So that's uh, that's a good one to have. And so let me ask you this. You uh, are certainly involved in this. What uh, kind of what's your origin story? How did you get into this so 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 fervently? So it, this is a story about my in-laws, you know, but I was born in India many years ago. Aging in India is different. I met my wife who's from Spokane, Washington, and through her, I met my in-laws. My father-in-law worked for the post office. Uh, my mother-in-law was a nurse working in the hospital system, and they had basically built their retirement dreams around very basic notions of having a house paid for by the time we retire, having a few hundred thousand dollars in the bank, and Social Security, Medicare, our debt-free lifestyle, we should, we're good to go. And their dreams were to jump in the RV, go to the American highways and the byways. In that house, Andy, the RV never left the house because my father-in-law got diagnosed with Alzheimer's the last year of his work life. So a few okay. years, yeah, yeah, and a few years, my mother-in-law tried to keep him at home, but eventually his condition got to a point that he couldn't recognize his wife. He starts wandering, looking for his wife, looking for his home. And then my mother-in-law then goes to the doctor and says, hey, doc, I need help. Five acres of land and bill. I can't do it all. And without any hesitation, the doctor says, look, you should know better than this, Vivian, as a nurse. There's no answer to what Bill has. And that's about the time he ended up in the nursing home. And that's when I met this family. And the first time that I went to the nursing home, I was shell-shocked. That would be a polite way of saying it. I walked away from that experience asking myself, how does the richest country in the world take care of their old aging people when these people can no longer care for themselves? That was my inspiration to go back to law school and understand the system and and so clear to me as to why things go wrong and what we need to do to fix it wow what a big picture problem you just uh, explained <laughs> and uh well i guess the logical question after what you discovered what have you done what have you found out so the good news and the bad news the bad news that I discovered through this relentless amount of research is that what I thought was just a one-off, right? I mean, Bill happened, it's too bad it happened in his life. But when you start reading the research around this issue, it turns out 70% of Americans do not get to live out their last days in their own home. We, will, we are destined, we are 70% doomed to take a last breath in a hospital, hospice house, nursing home, or place we don't want to be. So it's not a small isolated incident. That's the surprise, that's the bad news. The good news is it's a very predictable process that people like Bill go through. And here's how it goes. It's a pretty simple proposition. As long as we are healthy in our lives, we are living the dream, right? We can travel, we can spend time, we can spend money, whatever we want to do. The moment we lose our health, that's when the dream starts turning into a nightmare. Why? Because we end up in the hospital, they save our life, and now they're saying, oh, which rehab center do you want to go to? Another place I don't know anyone, everyone will tell me what to do, I'll have no control over my life. No, 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 I want to go back home. But that's not the way the system works. A health issue is going to become a housing issue. Housing issue is next going to become a financial issue. Why? Because the healthcare system that we live with, Medicare supplement plan, it'll pay for heart attack and stroke and cancer, anything for which you can go to a doctor, hospital, or pharma company, and they can make money of your misery. That's covered by Medicare. If you have a condition for which there is no medical cure, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, old age, frailty, Everything, Andy, mind you, we are likely to deal with as we grow older. These things don't happen to us when we are young. None of those things are covered by Medicare. Why? Oh, you don't need medicine. You need someone to cook for you, clean for you, get you out of bed. Everything that's done by home care, home health, assisted living, nursing homes, we don't cover any of that stuff in any meaningful way by the healthcare system. And the cost 
is a few thousand dollars a month to several tens of thousand dollars a month for every month you're living. And then if you're lucky, somebody will say, go see an elder law attorney. Oh, no, 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 I got all my documents in place. No, no, no. These attorneys will help you cope with the crazy expenses and help you navigate life so that the ill person can live a good quality of life without them running out of money and without the family losing its sanity in the process. Well, that sounds magical. Right. So in the end, so just think about it, Andy, for a second. A health issue is where it almost always starts, becomes a housing issue, becomes a financial issue, becomes a legal issue. And all along the way, it's a family affair. Just because we don't want to become a burden to our loved ones means utterly nothing. It's the biggest lie we tell our family members. The day that we are ill, everyone is stuck in our life. The only question is, how well prepared are they and how much time do you have? So that's the magic of the, the, the research, the answers that I was able to figure. This is so predictable. We know what goes wrong. We know what the pieces to the puzzle are. If we can just somehow magically pull together these pieces better than we do now, then we can have our cake and eat it too. Well, Rajiv, I'm hearing nothing but doom here. I'm, I'm waiting for the silver lining. <laughs> so let me give you the silver lining. The silver lining is, the silver lining resides with you and I, the consumer. Not with the government, not with the big businesses, because they have a way of doing business that does not comport to what we want. So the beginning of all of this is to be really clear about what do we want out of life, right? And what you will find is, and even just reflect on your own life, uh, Andy, you and I are both coasting towards retirement pretty soon. What do we want in retirement? Well, we want to grow old, have the money to be able to have time to enjoy life, travel, spend time with friends and family and do fun things. What we don't have any time for is to fall ill, end up in a nursing home against our wishes, or to become a burden on our loved ones, or to end up losing all our money so we go broke like my father-in-law did. We don't have time for that. But when you compare, these are the goals, I and mean, these goals are going to be more important, but when you compare them to what we do in the planning stages, right? The doctors are saying, oh, don't worry about it. Go get a health insurance policy. When you fall ill, come see me. That's healthcare. Housing, oh, don't worry about it. Live in the house as long as you can, and when you fall apart, we'll figure something out. Finances, buy a long-term care policy. Have lots of money, it'll be okay. Lawyers, you need a will, trust, powers of attorney. So everyone's got their shtick, if you will, right? Everyone's got their way of helping you navigate through retirement. But does anyone, ask yourself this honestly, ask anyone, ask yourself this honestly, has anyone in the retirement continuum ever come to you and said, let me help you build a life where if you grow old and fall ill, you will not end up in a nursing home or become a burden on your loved ones? Well, the only way to assure that, correct me if I'm wrong, is to have a, a, a big savings account. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's what the financial industry would like you to think. And that's yeah, right. I mean, they, they're right. I mean, if you have lots of money, clearly you should be able to take care of things. Okay. All right. Let's test that theory out a little bit. Do you know who Glenn Campbell is? Yes, the singer. Yeah. $15 million estate. The guy has dementia, he ends up in the nursing home, he dies in the nursing home. So 15 million is not enough, we need more. Okay, Tim Conway, $50 million, dementia, nursing home, dies in the nursing home. Oh, so 50 million is not enough, all right. Casey Kasem, $80 million, dementia gets dragged from California to die in a hospital in Gig Harbor, Washington. This crazy thinking that we have, that all we need is money, is just that. The real question in financial planning that is never asked is what assurance do you have the day you fall ill? Your agents, your, your loved ones, your spouse, your children, your neighbors, your friends, whoever you've named as your agents, they will know how to use your money to give you a life that you want, not a life that some uh, discharged nurse at the hospital wants you to go ahead and adopt at that time. When's the last time you've seen any financial company put on an ad that acknowledges that, look, in the end, it's not the amount of money that will matter. It is the use of the money that will be more, more important. 
And the honest answer is no. But how does the financial industry make money? By selling your products, managing your money. So everything that comes out from the financial industry is about you need lots of money. And in the end, I promise you, that's what the book does such a good job of showing. You don't need millions of dollars. You need sanity. You need to have clear goals and a plan around the issue that the day that I fall ill, I want the care to come to me. I don't want my family to be becoming my unpaid caregivers. And I don't want to be paying all this money so I go broke while I'm still living. Well, I've been indoctrinated that way since the beginning uh, from when my parents were raising me. Right. And uh, I like what you hear. I, yeah. And I like what you're saying, I should say. Uh, and so uh, it's sort of uh, having forces me to kind of take a shift in thinking because yeah. Uh, the only way I've ever known that you can survive uh, when you're aged is to have a lot of money in the bank. Yeah. And that's what we've been brainwashed to think, right? If you really think about concepts, the, the thing that I did was not being born in, in America has a distinct advantage when it comes to looking at aging. Because I'm not thinking the same way, Andy, respectfully, as you are, as most of the people who were born here. I'm looking at 1.4 billion people in India who can grow old with the same problems that we have in America and live out their life without worrying about building a nursing home or assisted living, a place that nobody wants to go to. How does that happen? So you're making you you're starting to make some logic here. Right. And so the book really is a great expose that the industries are only going to give you answers that make the industry money. Lawyers make money by doing wills and trusts and powers of attorney. And heck, I'm a lawyer. I should know that. But the only thing that we are taught in law school is, hey, you need a will or trust, a powers of attorney, living will, all these documents. That's their answer to getting old gracefully. Then the financial industry buy products and, and have lots of money. The healthcare industry, don't worry about it. Come see me when you're ill. The housing industry, stay here as long as you can, then we move away. These are all fallacies. Why the industries make money by giving that message to you. And none of those messages, none of those messages have, I want to help you not end up in a nursing home or become a burden on your loved ones in their nomenclature. So they're not bad people. They're not like they're trying to uh, dupe us on purpose, but unwittingly we have created a system that if they're financially it is not in the interest for them to give you an answer then you're not going to get the answer from them which then leaves you the consumer in a situation where you must take it upon yourself to ask and, and de de develop the questions that the industries will never tell you to go ahead and ask well, I sure like what you're hearing, and uh, the, you uh, you have some ho uh, hopeful messages here. Yes. Our system is what it is. Uh, how are we going to uh, change to live in the environment that you're projecting? Right. And that's a great question, and that's the hopeful part of the book. So the first part of the book is really the doom part that you were saying, because I just want people to be crystal clear why things go wrong. And the second part of the book is the beauty of the whole thing, that it, it gives you all the answers you're looking for. So let me just give you an example of in each industry. First, understand in life, retirement planning cannot simply be about having lots of money or having the right legal documents, having the right doctor or living in the right house. Life is multidisciplinary. You must take a look at health and housing and finance and legal and family as a continuum. Why? Because what we talked about, all your problems are usually going to start as a health issue, then they'll become a housing issue, then they'll become a financial issue, then they'll become a legal issue, and all along the way, they're a family affair. So now you take a look at healthcare. So what does healthcare in America look like? Well, healthcare in America in retirement is pretty simple. You turn 65, you enroll in Medicare by a supplement plan. That's what healthcare is. Now, what problem have we solved by enrolling in Medicare buying a supplement plan? We have access to health care if we fall ill. If I have a heart attack, stroke, cancer, I can go to the doctor, hospital, to pharma company, and I can save my life. Great. So what's wrong with that? Here's what's wrong with that. If your goal in life is I don't want to end up in a nursing home against my wishes, 
Ask yourself this question. Who do you not find in a nursing home? Healthy people. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're buying the Kool-Aid that the healthcare industry is selling, you need an insurance policy so you can have access to healthcare. You've just done that as bought Kool-Aid because that makes them money. The healthcare industry makes money by fixing you after you're ill, not by, by keeping you healthier longer. So it must be your job to learn how to use the healthcare industry so that you don't fall ill longer. And here I'll give you just one example. The book has all sorts of examples of what we don't pay attention to. But here's one example. University of Minnesota. There's a guy called Dr. Chad Bolt, research physician. He does a study around 568 people, all of these people over the age of 60, uh, all of the people over the age of 70. And every one of them was going to see a health decline in the short term, either cognitive or functional, something was going to give way. Divides the group into two groups. One group, he says, go see your regular doctors, your internal medicine and your family docs. And he writes a letter to them saying that we think your patient is a high risk of falling ill. Keep an eye on them. The other group says, go see this group of specialists called geriatricians. 18 months go by, he looks at the study, the, the results of the study. Here's what he finds out. People who were seeing geriatricians, 50% less depression, 40% less use of home care and home health, 33% less disabilities. Andy, let me, let me spotlight the middle one again, 40% less use of home care and home health. What does life look like when you don't need home care and home health? You're nowhere close to being in a nursing home. That's what life looks like. How would the average consumer like to lower our risk of going to a nursing home by 40% without spending a penny more out of our pocket? Tell and me how much, educa and, and, and how much education? Did, uh, properly, tell me what they did well with a geriatrician. What did, did that group do differently than the other group? They better understood the differences in the physiology of people under the age of 65, and some would say 70, compared to uh, the average internal medicine or the family medicine. So let me, let me tell you what they did right was this. What does a pediatric doctor do different than an internal medicine doctor when they're taking care of children under the age of 18? Make sure they stay healthy, get the proper diet, exercise. But, but why doesn't a regular doctor do that, do that also? I mean, they're doctors, right? Absolutely. But the physiology of children is different than the rest of the population. Same way the physiology of older people is different than the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. Medications that are good for people at 25 and 30 and 40 and 50 may be the reason why you and I are showing signs of dementia at 70 and 80 and 90, routinely prescribed by traditional medicine, your internal medicine and family medicine. So it's not that they are coming from Mars or they have superior knowledge. They just are more focused on the differences in the physiological and the pathological needs of people who are over the age of 70, and they are more effective in keeping this population healthier longer. These are 40%. The, these are the geriatric. Folks. Geriatric doctors, right. Okay. And the question well, is here, you don't hear yeah. a lot of people going into geriatrics, it seems. I don't, uh, you, you know, you know, you go to your your primary care physician, and then they refer you to this other doctor. So I know it's a profession. I, in fact, my uh, my dad did it for a while. So uh, I don't hear about it as much, but it sounds like a good idea. It's a great idea. I mean, when you take a look at the stats that come out, Andy, it just is unbelievable as to how many low-hanging fruit we have out there. But we never get educated about it because the medical industry has got very little incentive to keep people healthier longer. Wow. So it's up to you to put yourself in a situation. And the book does a great job of showing you dozens of different things you can end up doing in the healthcare to use your healthcare better so that you can stay healthier longer. Give, give me uh, maybe uh, one example, let's say, that uh, might I might do better if I that maybe I wouldn't have gotten that prescription from my primary care doctor over at the uh, hospital over here. I mean, you know, what, in other words, what would let's say the geri geriatric 
specialists tell you to do that maybe the primary care physician wouldn't. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, totally it does. I mean, what a geriatric doctor likely. Now, mind you, I'm not a physician. I'm yeah. a lawyer. So please, nobody should confuse this to be medical advice. But what a geriatric doctor is going to do is to take a look at where are you and what is around the bend because they understand the physiological changes that are going to happen based on your present condition. And they can then adapt to that and they can treat that a little bit better than an internal medicine or family medicine uh, physician would because they don't have that knowledge or the study course behind them to be able to make those predictions and connect the two and two together. Okay, that, so, that makes sense. And yeah. now that that's, sounds like that's one element. We're, we're talking about a lot of different factors that right. work into all of this. Maybe we right. can, uh, what would be another one, another area we might want to jump into? So let's jump into housing then, you know, because the, the, the book does a good job. It'll give you all sorts of ideas about how you can approach healthcare differently. And the key in healthcare is learn how to use your health insurance, select a policy better. I mean, most people, they're thinking about insurance policies, it's all about money, you know, and, and today you hear about Medicare Advantage. What's the difference between traditional Medicare, Medicare Advantage, which is better for you? So there's a lot that goes into it, and the book does a good job of covering that. But then let's go to housing for a second. 70% of Americans will not be taking their last breath in their own home. Andy, if that is not a sobering fact, if that does not... Uh, that does not compel people to do a 50 million person march on Washington, D.C. and say, what is wrong with us, the richest country in the world, where we are accepting of 70 percent of us being in a hospital, hospice house, nursing home, despite having done all the planning in life. Mm. And the reason why that happens is very fundamental. As a consumer population, think about what the average person's housing plan looks like. Oh, I want to live in my house as long as I can. And when the time comes, I can't. We'll figure something out. We got options. That's the planning, right? Now, look at life. What do you think life will look like when even you start thinking I shouldn't be living at home? Not the best day in your life. Why? You fell down, broke your hip. You had a stroke, you're paralyzed. You've got heart issues. You've got cancer. You've got dementia. Somebody takes you to the hospital. Probably for the first time, what is going to to, to invoke in you, you will start recognizing, oh my God, I'm about to lose everything about my life that I knew. Not only am I dealing with the worst day in my life, but now the system is telling me that I should go to a place that I don't know anyone. Everyone's going to tell me what to do. I have no control over my life. So the consumer, I think we need to start thinking of this problem a little differently. What a heart should be saying and is saying, I think, Andy, it's not that I want to live here as long as I can. My heart is saying, I want to build that plan that will assure me that the day that I fall ill, the care will come to me. My family will not be my unwitting, unpaid caregivers in the process, which is what happens. And I will not go bo broke paying for this care because Medicare sure as heck is not going to cover any of this, this, this cost. So That's let's... Let's say somebody heard this and tomorrow they're going to start that. Uh, how, because again, we're so accustomed to this traditional yeah. way of, of covering ourselves. How do we make that switch? And the, the switch is not difficult. It's a mental switch. And, and, and I think, you know, it is how we think about it. In law, Andy, there's a concept called framing the issue. So what lawyers are taught in law school is that when you're fighting a lawsuit, when you're trying to change people's mind about what they, how they should be looking at your issue, then you need to frame the issue the way that you want them to look. And so the foundation, using the same principle, I came up with this idea that, look, I mean, it's all about a foundational issue. Instead of the average person saying, I want to live here as long as I can, the first thing you have to ask yourself, does it make sense? Do I want to say that? No, no, no. I want to live here with the certainty of knowledge that the day I fall ill, the care will come to me. My family is not my unpaid caregivers. I'm not going broke in the process. The answer is yes, great. Now that's the foundation. How do you accomplish that? There are different ways you can accomplish that. If you want to live in the house that you're living in right now, is it age friendly? Or do you have your bedrooms upstairs and the laundry is in the basement? Yeah. That's not going to help you make that happen. Sure. Should you be moving? 
If you're going to move, should you move close to your children? Because here's the reality. If you say, I want to live my life in my own home, you need an age-friendly house. You need to identify where the money will come from to pay for this care because Medicare won't pay for it. And you will need to live close enough to a child because they will be needed to make sure that when your money is used to hire people coming to the house, these caregivers actually show up. Don't take advantage if you don't leave you neglected. So if your child is living 150 miles from your house and you're saying, I don't want to be a burden, that won't happen, will it? So you have to look at this stuff, so, but you can pull it all together. Maybe you're going to move closer to your child. Maybe you live, live with a child on the same property, not on the same roof, but maybe under the same property. And maybe you have to remove that word burden from your uh, maybe mind you do because, need to, yeah. because you can expect at least some assistance from uh, from your family, possibly. Right, right. And so, so what that means is that what it, the choice will come down to is this. If I live in my own house, I can minimize the burdens on my children. I will need to rely on them. Let's be honest about that. Mm -hmm. I'll need to rely on them. That means I can minimize the burdens. I can tell them you must not be my unpaid caregiver, but you must be there to see to it that care comes in and people don't take advantage of me, leave me neglected. Oh, no, I don't want to do that to my kids. I had my life and my time in life, and now it's their time. Well, you've got a choice. Move to a particular type of retirement community and demand from this community that if I move here, I want you to give me a written guarantee that I will never have to move from your place again. If my money runs out, you're responsible. If my health fails me, you got every level of care. And these communities are... are much smaller in number than your traditional retirement community is. And they're called continuing care retirement communities or life plan communities. And it's amazing. We've had for 80 plus years, we've had this housing industry that has looked to you and I, Andy, and said, look, you've got a choice. You can live in your own house, but you definitely are going to be a burden to your children to some extent. You can minimize that, but they will need to be there. You don't want that, they move to a continuum care retirement community. If you move here, guaranteed not to be a burden to your children, but you're busy spending their inheritance. Now, where do people find out where these continuing uh, retirement communities are? Well, I mean, you can you can go to a uh, website called leadingage.com. Okay. There's one. Uh, and in every local community, you, you got retirement uh, planning specialists, and they will have lists of them you can go to. But look for continuing care retirement community. A Google okay. search is not a good place to start. So, so that's the housing issue when you take a look at it. There's mm -hmm. so much there. But I think housing is the key to getting your retirement right. And housing is the one area, Andy, nobody does any work in. Whoa. Well, you packed in a lot of information <laughs> there. <laughs> I think that it, it some of it almost requires um, a, a, a really a change in thought because for so long as I started out saying here that I was indoctrinated with a certain process that you go through right. and you've done a good job in maybe breaking that uh, uh, rigid belief into something that can maybe be a more practical. Right. And, you know, it's interesting you say that because the day I started my PhD, I was at University of Washington sitting in a classroom with about seven or eight other PhD students sitting in there. And, and the professor, she happened to be married to a Greek uh, husband, also a professor. And she stopped me after the class and said, Rajiv, tell me something. How the heck are you going to change a paradigm in America? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. You know, and I, the only answer, I'd never thought about it that way. I said, you know, I don't care about changing anyone's paradigm. The only person I, I plan to help is the person sitting in front of me so I can educate them, show them there's a better way of doing it. It's up to them to decide whether this is for them or not. And that's what I've done for 22 years. We have 8,000 plus clients. And I say to all of them, look, you don't have, I, I'm not the Messiah. I don't, I don't know it all. I have a very definite point of view. And my point of view is in old age, nobody in America deserves to be taken away from their home and put into a care facility against the wishes. 
Nobody deserves to see all the money stripped away from them just because they didn't buy a long-term care policy. And nobody deserves to become a burden on their loved ones. Yeah. But it's up to you to take a look at all these options and decide, is this the way that I want to approach my life? So your book uh, has your your book covers a lot of uh, what we're talking about today. Absolutely, it, it covers everything and a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. It absolutely takes that into account. Yep. Yeah, and uh, for folks who uh, have heard this, and uh, you know, I always like to find some takeaway takeaways that someone can maybe take action on. Uh, what might what might that be? I think the simple action, the first thing that you want to do is to keep an open mind about retirement and just recognize that the way that we've been doing things in our lives may not be the only way that it needs to be done. That's the first thing that I would be challenging people. Keep an open mind. Look, remember this, uh, uh, Andy, the earth was flat till somebody said it's round, mm -hmm. right? right? The four minute mile could never be broken until Roger Bannister actually ran that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. nobody could kick a 61-yard field goal till Tom Dempsey, with a foot and a half, actually kicked it. Yeah. So these are paradigms that we live with. The question we have to ask is, just because we've been doing it a certain way, doesn't make it that that's the only way to do it. And that's the benefit that I bring. And I'm saying to people with all my might, four-fifths of the world's population can live their lives without building a nursing home or with the fear of being put away from their home when they fall ill or becoming a burden, we can do it too. We've got way too many advantages for us not to be able to get this answer right.